just trying to make it work. Well, you look good and you sound good. Finally, we're stepping Yay. up our game. Shannon got a fucking mic. Barely. We've had like supreme technical difficulties because I have an HP Beats computer. Here, I need to take one of these. So we're talking on the phone <laughs> and, and I'm talking into the mic and there's a screen in front of me. So I've got you in this year and I had to take the other one out because it's like, we, first of all, not we, you have technical difficulties as usual because I feel like every time we're about to get on this thing, you can never figure out your shit on your end. But no, everything's always figured out on my end. It's just, it's not even my fault that I have one jack for input and output. Yes. Or but, you have the live difficulties. Like it's always something. But the good news is, is that there's no lag. There's no reverb. Your mic's a little too loud. But you can fix that later. You just got to turn it down a little bit and play with it a little bit. But I'm it? sure our huge podcast fans on iTunes and everything else in the world and Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Play, all the other shit that we're on, they're going to love this because the biggest complaint that we used to have, it was the sound. So They can kiss my ass. I'm sure. That, the people, the few people that complained can kiss my ass. The sound yeah. wasn't that bad. It's not about the sound. It's like, you know, like gamers bitch about the graphics. I bitch about it. It's not about the graphics, man. It's about the gameplay. It's not Which about the sound. It's life. about the content of the show. It's oh, been, the content of the show is amazing. It always has been amazing. And now we have taken it to the next level because Shannon got a fucking mic. So pumped. I think I'm more excited yeah. about you getting a mic than you are about you getting your own mic. I am. I mean, you are. I am because you sound you so good and you look so good. That lighting is... On point, by the way. Looking and it's good. still super rigged, but we're getting there. I don't even bother with lighting anymore, so you can tell. Like, I don't give a shit. It's too much work yeah, to set up the are, lights. We're going to laugh at these humble beginnings someday. We are. We're now like, that, we've got a studio. Now that uh, our podcast has been monetized, we're going to make it yeah. rain. Well, I should say our listeners are going to make it rain. So if you're listening exactly. to any other platforms, make it rain for us. If you like what you see and what you hear, well, if you're listening on it, it's what you hear. So. Yeah. Um, so what's new, man? It's been a week. It's been a week already. I can't believe it. It's. I know it went crazy. by really fast. Like it did. I was like getting all ready, and like it was actually you this week that was like, "Oh my god, what's today?" Do you don't understand? I feel like every show I start like, "You don't understand." I've been so busy. I've been so busy. It's true though. Like today, I literally wasted the whole day doing a voiceover that's 22 minutes long that's the total of the voiceover and it took me literally seven hours to do it and then it had to for be like edited one of your videos yeah one of my videos for work it's called it's for a video sales letter where i explain everything that i do and how we do it and ah. my voice is kind of like raspy and i have two more to go so i mean that set me back for so long but anyway let's move on to the fun shit what do we have what's good what's going on what's going on in the world i know oh, in the, the world the yeah, VMAs, man. let's start with the fun stuff. Cause like I, my notes in my haste to get this microphone working, mm -hmm. I restarted my computer without saving my notes. And I have a super small, like short term memory bank. So I've got like the VMAs and then like just horrible, terrible national news. You had one job, Shannon, one job to keep track. It's not of in my recovered, recovered files. So. It wasn't, I mean, my notes were obviously not meant to be like, we're just going to do this like we normally do and freestyle it. But yeah, the VMAs. The VMAs are no. any of the clips or. I didn't even know the VMAs were still a thing. Does that make, does that mean I'm super old now? No, I mean, they're just not really impressive anymore. I mean, I, I DVR'd it and I, there was nothing else on. Like I hate watching because it's way too long and like, I don't know half of the people. And well, yeah. I do know half of the people, but they're just not like, mm, I'm not into it. And commercials. Well, you DVR it, so you don't have to sit through the commercials. It's the commercials that I hate. Like, so I wasn't even paying attention. Like we watched it, but we were on our phones the whole time. And then I went back and went through the DVR, but Jeff made a comment. He was like, why does everybody look the same? And I was like, he's right. Everybody literally looks like a clone of each other. But I think that's like, that's always been that way, though. That's I think Is that's it? yeah. I mean, if you go back more within recent times, though, like everybody, it's become like the Kardashian thing. Everybody's oh, just a clone now. 
Oh, you're talking about the Kardashian look, but I, you know, I know what you're talking about. Like they all have the the black hair with the same makeup. Yes. And yeah, I, I have noticed that lately. That is true, dude. I don't want to talk about them. Please, let's not talk about them. Yeah, let's not. I had. To, I was like trying to think of a way not to to mention them, but I had to anyway. They're basic and generic. So um, Ariana Grande, I was really looking forward to hers, which it was an amazing performance, but she lip synced. I'm pretty sure. Oh no. She's got a great voice. One of the like best. And she's normally she's not a lip syncer, but I think everybody did for the VMAs. I think the only person who can get away with uh lip syncing is Britney. Britney She is the only one. She is the only one. She's a boss bitch that's allowed to lip sync all she wants because she puts up a show and it's you know, exactly. it's a show. It's not you're not going to see Britney for her voice, let's face it. <laughs> you know? So that's what I want to talk about too. Like I was like who the hell are these people? Like one chick, they had like the best upcoming artists. Like I've never heard of her before. Nobody's heard of her before. Let's put it that way. She couldn't dance and she was kind of a shitty singer. So then Jeff and I got in this like huge philosophical discussion, entertainers versus singers. Right. Like I can't really think of any other entertainers besides Britney Spears. We have good singers. You have Ariana Grande, Mariah Carey, you know, Whitney Houston, Christina Aguilera, um, Adele. I don't know. I mean, well, they're few and far between. You're talking about about voices? Then Adele yes. for sure. Beyonce can sing. Beyonce. Uh, uh, um, Demi Lovato can actually sing really well. Yeah, when she's not doing drugs. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So shitty singers that are popular. Taylor Swift. Uh, can, Taylor actually, can, can Taylor actually can Taylor actually sing though? She or no? cannot sing. She's a shitty singer and she's a shitty dancer. So that's what I mean. I don't see how these people are becoming famous. It's called record labels who put their money all behind it, write poppy songs, and that's why they want to push on the radio. So that's what you get, which is sad. I I miss the days, and you know, I only got to live through this for a little bit. I miss the days of you know when a DJ. When DJs actually DJ, like they will go to the radio yeah. station and they will like play the stuff that they found out that they liked. And that's how you found all these cool bands, you know, back in the day. That's how, you know, bands like Led Zeppelin, you know, The Doors, you know, uh, all those old school bands, even Metallica. It's like it was, yeah. you know, it was it was DJs that would actually play their own records. So they will find, it wasn't pushed by the. By the the what do you call it the record labels but now it's like it's all about they don't make the same money they used to from sales so they got to push all these poppy shit and the sad yeah. part is you, you know before you would travel the country and you turn on the radio it's like oh shit i wonder what they're playing here and if you're in montana i'm sure you were playing some you know country shit and then <laughs> if you were in california you were listening to some you know rock and roll or whatever it was at the time and now it's just it's the same everywhere it's the same Every exact five songs in every single radio station in the world. It's sad. It really it is. is. And, that's and you know, Justin Bieber is actually a really good singer too. He's talented with instruments. And um, I mean, we can just get rid of so many artists and my feelings would not be hurt. And I like, have yeah. a question. Do, do we actually have like a real streaming radio station when there's actual DJs where they play whatever they want? Does I that even exist? I mean, what about like the Eagle, Russ Martin? I mean, no, that that's. I mean, that's a talk show, though. I'm talking about like playing actual music that they picked out. But that's. I don't know how that works, though. I'm sure they have I to pay either. back the artists to play their songs over the radio. Yeah, That'd if cool. anything, I think it would be like what is it, Canon? Like that. It's Canon here in up. like the Dallas area where like people do it out of there. It's just like a gen generic, and I don't even know if it's Canon. It's just like a generic radio station oh, where everybody, oh, hey, <laughs> <laughs> shout out from the living room. <laughs> shout out from the living room. What, what? <laughs> um, but yeah, they do it like out of somebody's, oh my God. He's Can you believe that there's football on? I didn't even know there was football on. I, he's distracting me. I don't even care about football anymore. <laughs> it's like, I don't care anymore either. I, I hate the Cowboys too. You hate the Cowboys now? What? Mostly because I mean, not that I ever cared about football, but because like the whole stupid NFL thing is just and like versus Trump and the whole country and then Jerry Jones like acting like uh, a slave driver. Started so well, and now we're going down the fucking rabbit no, hole just not. because I, I ask about football. I'm sick of it. Like that's why I'm just over it. 
I don't even, it's like put a bad taste in my mouth. Let's go back. Let's go back. So Post yeah. Malone, I did see on the news somewhere on Twitter or some shit that his plane, the, the landing gear got stuck or something. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. Something happened. The tires blew up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's not a big deal. You can always, you can still land the plane, you know, but you know, if you're on the plane, that sucks, you know, but yeah. And then everybody on Twitter, like, people are so hateful, man. I, You know, haters are going to be everywhere. Just because you're successful, you're going to have haters. That's fucked up. So it's like, um, uh-oh, uh I think you pissed off Jeffrey. Uh-oh, the ring's coming off. Oh, <laughs> I'm man. sleeping in the guest bedroom tonight. You hate Great. the cow voice. It's over. Oh, no. He's gonna, he's <laughs> this gonna has been a huge in. discussion in our house lately. He's going to come back barging into the room. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, and it's like all these people wishing for him to die. I'm like, yes. All right. I try to listen to like one or two Post Malone songs just because the guy's popular. I wanted to see what it was all about. And I could not sit through him. Not that I'm saying that he's not talented. The guy has a voice. I recognize he has a voice, but it's just not my type of music and I can't get yeah. into it. I love but, him. Do you? But it's like, yeah. people are like hating on the guy wishing he died. I'm like, why are people so fucked up, man? I think they're he so commented. He's like, everyone on this website, fuck you, because you're all like wishing. But you know dead. what's funny? All those people talking all that shit and wishing that that on the poor guy, they're the ones that will like see him somewhere and run up to him to take a fucking selfie and post it on a picture on Instagram. You know? Exactly. On Facebook or Instagram. Yeah. So they're a bunch of hypocrites just hiding behind a keyboard trying to be all cool and shit. And that's um, kind of terrifying, though. Like, it is. He's already afraid of flying, he said. Dude, you want to know what's terrifying? So my new brand, uh, that's, you know, the fitness one, uh, has the, the my partner. She's, you know, very attractive. She's in fitness, and, she you know, she's in shape, obviously. And she has a very good personality. Dude, she has, like, two stalkers, like, hard core stalker so that's the other side of things like she's nobody you know what i mean no one yeah. she's no one basically and she already has like two stalkers that literally message her message the page like six times a day seven times a day like they known her forever and it's just super creepy so imagine the shit every that like girl. real every huh? girl has no, no, at no, least no, no, like no, a no, no 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 it's not it's these are girls like girls like talking to her like their best friends. Oh, so like, not like what is it? Single white female. I think yes, my sister yes, had one yes, of those. yes, yes. Single white female, just like that, yeah. man. It's super I think creepy. my sister, like we're both pretty convinced that this chick was like, I mean, dated the same guy as she did after Cam uh, she broke up with him, like did her makeup the same way, dressed the same way, like did the same things. Mm -hmm. It is super creepy. I don't think anybody's ever done that to me but i think somebody's done it to krista too like she, if she's still in the comments she might know who i'm talking about she's still there i don't know we'll see what she says but yeah um see this is why if you're listening on the podcast we usually come you know sign up with the follow on facebook so you guys can watch live and interact with us man the more people that hop in here the more fun we can have so little plug right there for facebook go on the little follow button <laughs> and just follow when we go live subscribe to it Anyway, but uh, no, it's super creepy shit, man. It's one of yeah. those things. It's like, can you imagine being like a real celebrity like Tom Cruise? Imagine his level of fucking stalkers. Yeah. Who was it? Um, I think it was Shaquille O'Neal. They have like the ring system, you know, the ring cameras everywhere. Shout out. I would love a free ring. But yeah. <laughs> um, so his wife was just so happened to see, I guess they got an alert and she looked and there were like people coming up to her house to rob them because yeah. they thought they were out of town. And she was like, I see you. This is and Shaq's they, house? They took off running. Yeah, Shaq's house. Oh my God, that's hilarious. That's messed up, man. Yeah, but you have to have like, and then like Rihanna or people who have ended up in the houses of the people that they're stalking. Like, that's that's crazy, crazy shit. How are you rich and a celebrity and you don't have like a secured house? Like our house is like almost like Fort Knox. They and do, I have but stalkers. dude, people find ways around it. You can have the greatest security, you know, system in the world and people will find a way to like, you know, break in or whatever, or get rid of it. I don't know. 
I but mean, also, I wonder if they just assume that they're so safe that they kind of are careless about it, like forget to lock a door or, you know, don't secure their windows because they're like, whatever, I'm safe. No, I don't know, man. It's crazy. Like if I was that popular or that celebrity, which we already are celebrities, but, you know, we, yeah. we move up to the A level. We're at B right now. It's uh, already hard as it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can to, barely go to the grocery store. I know. People recognize in the street. It's like, I know you from somewhere. I'm like, do you? <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's so funny because, like, some people tell my wife that they listen to it and then watch, and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> because to her, none of this makes sense. None of it. She's like, I don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. I know you have fun with it and all that good shit. And she's like, how many people are watching? I'm like, there's 800 downloads a week right now. Yeah. She said, like, who the fuck is down? I'm like, I don't fucking know, but I'm not complaining about it. Obviously, we're like some kind of interest. Like, exactly. You know? Like, I don't think even if I was a huge celebrity and like people would be like, this it's just doesn't Fiesta. Fiesta. It's one of my biggest fans. <laughs> Boy, Fiesta. We had fun at the tent. We had, we had fun at the tent on the beach this past Saturday. Right about Did you? Yeah. My biggest fan right there. Aw, <laughs> Hi. Anyway. Oh, he's one of those people. So he's yeah. like stalker level. Oh yeah, totally. Fiesta is a total yeah. stalker. He looks right? like a stalker, actually. Yeah, he follows me everywhere, everywhere I go. <laughs> and then he makes you come out, and then he dips on you. It's like, oh, bro, I gotta go to dinner. Like he <laughs> gets you wasted, and then just leaves. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. That's all right. He makes fun of me because I don't live on my one mile ratio that it is, you know, Las Olas. So I'm like, hey, eh, I don't. I like it here. He's everywhere. So anyway. But, oh, that's the other thing. When you were watching the VMAs, it, it's what's up with everybody? It's everybody, like, have, to, like, their face tattooed now? It's, like, that's the new thing? Um, All mumble rappers, like, pretty much to be a mumble rapper, you have to have facial tattoos. So what's going to happen? <laughs> I mean, I have tattoos, so I can't talk. I mean, I'm not going to talk shit, but I have them in places. What if I don't want to show them, you know? I in don't private have places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like... What's going to happen? You know, how, what's the majority of them? They're like, you know, in their teens or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, I want to, I want to be there when they're 35 and looking at the mirror and be like, what the fuck was I thinking? Because especially right. that dude with a 69 and a half of his face. Oh, I that hate was, that guy. First of all, he's a like child rapist. He is. Oh God. I don't even yeah. know. What, I don't even know his name. I just see him with the fucking hair and like the 69 he's on his face. Such a moron. What? And what he's, you know he's just the biggest dork. Oh, we were like, we used to be best friends. Really like stabbed me in the back. Oh, really? No, but yeah, it's six nine. Literally, is his like rap name, whatever. Oh, really? And he, I think he like had sex. It was a thirteen year old, and then just recently he strangled a sixteen year old at some mall in Houston, the Galleria. So he's oh, that- going to court for that currently. Oh, that's nice. That's somebody to yeah. look up to. That's what kids have to look up to this day. At least in our day, we had like gangster rappers. You know, it was all about like protecting their turf, selling their drugs, murder, 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 kill, kill, kill. But at least it was people their age, you know? Exactly. Were they singing about raping kids? No, I don't think so. The only ones were SPM. That guy was a child rapist as well. So like after I found that out, I stopped listening to SPM. Talk I don't know how we got here. And I don't know either, but I was just going to tell you, there's an actual website out there where you can check all the, all the creepy sexual, what do you call it? Uh, like offenders in your too? area, pedophiles or whatever. Oh yeah. Watchdog. Yeah. I didn't want, like if I ever buy a house, that's the first thing I'm checking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, no, we don't funny. have very many here, but like where I went to high school, they're everywhere. How do you know this? Because I Googled it or I watchdogged it. No. Like, Dude, that's that, where they all go. That reminds me of that show. What's the name? Oh, fuck, what was the name of that guy? To Catch a Predator. Yes. Chris Hansen. What happened to that show? That show, I could watch that show for hours. Me too, because the idiots would come in with like cookies and lemonade. And then they'd be like, oh, no, I was just here to hang out. I was just totally here to hang out. And it's like, my my favorite part of it is like how smooth fucking Chris Henson was. He's like, oh, I have a seat over there. And they will listen. That's the <laughs> yeah. thing. They will listen. Like some random dude. And they're just like, okay, I'll just sit. Like run the other way, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, nobody ever took off running immediately that I can remember. 
I think one or two guys tried to run out, but you know, then the cops jumped uh, jumped on him. Oh man, there's yeah. drama in the comments right now. Ooh, there's Apparently, a football. Yeah, football people are, argument. People are finding about football in the comments. How exciting! Oh, Please so keep, keep it up. Aldo keep it up. Likes bring the Eagles, up. Huh? And Jeff Aldo likes the Eagles, and Jeff likes the Cowboys. Nice. I hate the Eagles. So I like the Cowboys because I lived in Texas for ten years. So that's how I pick my teams. Like. Yeah. I lived in California, so I like the 49ers. Well, I didn't have much like, of a choice because I moved to the States, and I grew up in Orlando when I moved to the States, and there's no team over there. There's no NFL team. So, you, you know, I really, didn't, I really didn't start learning football until I went to Florida State, and then I left and went to Dallas. And then when I went to Dallas, I was like, all right, I guess this is my team now. And, you know, and I was there for 11 years, and then I came back to South Florida. I'm not going to go for the shitty Dolphins. <laughs> like, I'm not yeah. a trader. I'm not a trader. I learned and took my football knowledge to the next level, a good old fox and hound <laughs> with my Texas oh, yeah. boys and girls, and now I'm a Cowboy fan for life, man. I can't change that. Yeah, I'm still learning stuff on, like, plays and moves and how oh, many dude, points I'm what bored. are. You know, how I, you know how I won my fantasy league last year? I literally went on Reddit and paid somebody to do all the picks for me because everybody was talking shit. And you know me, oh, I don't yeah. keep up with stats and all that. that crap. Yeah, yeah, I don't keep up with stats or any of that crap. So I just had some dude do it for me. I paid him for it. And I won the whole fucking fantasy league. And there was like, how the fuck is that even possible? I was like, bro, I tell you, I know my shit. It was hilarious. Go I remember one, I of my, one of my first favorite teams was the Detroit Lions because my brother used to collect football cards. And like they had, I don't know why, they their card out of everybody else's was holographic so i was like ooh, like they are my favorite <laughs> are they still a team are they still around i actually i think fiesta if you're still uh watching listening whatever didn't they they went far last year i think they made it all the way to the playoffs. i actually think they did right. better than the i Cowboys. think you're right they were like 13 and 0 if i'm correct or maybe i'm like thinking of the season before where they were zero and 13. I don't know, but there was one year, I think it was last year, they actually went all the way to the playoffs and they almost had it. And then, you know, something happened, which good for them. I mean, I think, uh, I think in South Florida, it's people are not as hardcore about football. I mean, people are more about college football, but people are super hardcore about the heat down here. Oh, yeah. Miami, I mean, yeah, I'm more about the heat. Yeah. I think I'm more passionate about basketball just because, like, I know nothing about basketball either. But I oh, like Shaq and I like Kobe and you know I, know. I like just the names. What is Aldo saying? I fell in love with the, I fell in love with the Eagles because I was a big Randall Cunningham fan when I was a kid. Dude was fun to watch. Okay, I have like, no I idea what that is. Old but school football, I've heard of the name, but I don't know who that is. I think old school football was a little more exciting. I think they have too much rules. That, that's why I like you know college football better actually. Like I watch more college games than NFL because I think with college it's like you know these the kids are like trying to make it. Yeah. So they go hard, man, and they're young, you know. And their points, like I've noticed, not that I care about high college football either, but like in games they score like way higher points than in the NFL. So I don't know. Like I've seen hundred point games, I think, in college football. No way. Is that even okay? No, I don't think that's happened. <laughs> well, way higher. Maybe not. See, I told you I don't know what I'm talking about. Just way higher than in the NFL than I've ever seen. Like NF uh, professional. I'm telling sports. you, college football, and it's not because I, I watch Florida State and all that because I love Florida State, but college football, it's way more exciting. It's like the players try way harder because they got someone to prove, man. They're trying to get that contract for the NFL. Exactly. And, you know that. It's really fucked up that they're putting this whole show and these universities make so much money out of it. And, and they, they get, get nothing. Shit. They get nothing. Like, yeah, what? And I don't understand why they couldn't make – somebody needs to have a lawsuit where they go, you know what? I can make money off my fucking name if I wanted exactly. to. Exactly. Like, right? go get um, scouted or something or drafted or whatever it's called. Like, No, I, I mean, that's you. what they're going for. What I'm saying is, like, while they're playing college football, why can they have be sponsored by someone? Exactly. You know why, why? I mean, I don't. The I don't coaches understand. are made. There, there's a coach making like millions of dollars. He's Dude. like the highest ranking, um, even our higher coach, than NFL. Our coach from Florida State, fucking Jimbo. He just got bought out by Texas A and M. I think. Yeah, Texas A and M. It's like something ridiculous. I think 
I, I'm going to get crucified for this because I'm throwing numbers out there and I can't remember if this is right or not. So please, people, I don't keep up with football like you guys do. So I'm just throwing <laughs> a number out there that I think it was. I think it was like $80 million to go okay. coach at uh, Texas NAO. You might be right, but like it, as of 2017, so this is a little old, highest ranking, Tom Herman, 5.5, David Shaw, 5.7. Okay, it's getting higher actually, so you might be right. Yeah, keep going. Okay, I'm, it's loading. Yeah, but all that's with me. Love college football. Keep looking, hold on. Yeah. Love, I'll just say, love college football as well. It's far more exciting. The ranking system makes it dynamic when it comes time to pick teams and for the playoffs. Yeah, man. It's super more exciting. I agree with you on that for sure. It says $11.5 million is the highest right here. But again, this was in 2017. No, man. I got to find out how much Jimbo got. Here, hold on. It was something ridiculous. I'll pull it up. Here, keep talking or something. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah, he was the uh, the coach for uh, Florida State after uh... five. This is not in any kind of order. What kind of stupid it's list not? is this? Business Insider. I should have not clicked on a Business Insider link about okay. football. Okay, ten year deal worth a reported seventy five million dollar deal. Seventy five million dollars for oh, 10, ten year, dude. Huh? I mean, that's it. Ten years and the players. Million? kill themselves for for like sometimes nothing. nothing because not everybody gets drafted yeah yeah the chances of getting drafted are not that high and just because you get drafted doesn't mean you're, make, you're gonna make millions you know exactly. you get drafted and you might make a hundred grand a year which is not bad but you know for all that shit you put yourself through your whole life exactly and then even in the nfl like people are like you know what just shut up and play football you get paid to entertain us i'm like no, there's like a lot of damage that goes into like their brains, their bodies. Like I do not think as much as they get paid, they're compensated enough for for the damage they do to themselves. And then protections as far as concussions and, you know, like football players, there have been guys that have killed themselves and they don't shoot themselves in the head. And they specifically ask like to have their brains like oh, I, forget, I can't think of his name. Like we don't know anything about sports. But he oh, asked. Get, I know what you're talking about. A, um, his brain, like, examined to see what the damage is. But yeah, I mean, dude, you you're going out there knocking the shit out of each other. Of course, you're gonna have some kind of damage. But why is it that we hear this about NFL players, but we don't hear it from rugby players? <laughs> I that's mean, rug, true. Dude, rugby players are fucking savages. <laughs> like, they're not maybe that's bad. why we don't hear about it. They probably just die on the spot. Yeah. Oh. You know what my new favorite sport is? And I can't, I don't even know what it's called, but I saw a video of it going viral a couple of times. I think I said that to you because I was laughing so hard. It's like the medieval fighting where people in Europe, where people dress up with fucking. Uh, Jousting? No, like they're, they're in full on like medieval gear and fucking with on swords horses. and hammers. And there's one clip where the guy's just bashing the other guy's fucking head with a hammer, with a sledgehammer. Oh and my gosh, like, are they on horses? True. No, they're fucking like in a cage. Like you like old school cage fighting? Yes, yes, but they're wearing like medieval gear and they have swords or like sledgehammers and shit like that. And they're literally sitting there and the guy's just thumping the fuck out of this guy's head. He's like, doom, doom, Jesus. doom. And you see that like, you know, when metal starts bending and it starts like, like caving like in. Yes, <laughs> yes. And it's fucking hilarious. If guy, I'm telling you, go on Facebook and on the search bar, just Google medieval fighting, cage fighting, or whatever the fuck it is. You'll find it and you'll laugh your ass off. I'm telling you. I laughed so hard when I saw that. I can't I believe the, we like, talked about on. football so long. I know. I know. What else is going on? What else do you want to talk well, about? Where, so there was, um, okay, this is, my notes are starting to come back to me. So Good. one of them was about football. I'm Googling Ohio State. So there was a coach, um, like the head coach, I guess, Urban Meyer. Mm -hmm. He was just suspended for three games because I guess there was a wide receiver coach that had beaten his wife and like abused his wife. And she said that she went to this head coach. She went to the team and she's like, hey, this is what's happening and being abused. They said they didn't try to cover it up, but they didn't really do anything. And she said she went to the coach's wife and the wife didn't do anything. So anyway, they ended up firing the coach that was beating his wife, but they suspended the head coach that didn't do anything about it because 
it wasn't like a good example for the team. But that I'm kind of conflicted about because at what point like do they have a responsibility to her? Like if I went to my employer, I don't know if they would necessarily have to take action. You know, mm. again, like if I had tell HR I'm being abused, like well, they would, I guess, have to give right. me resources. But I they can't that, do anything. But they can't do anything legally. But I mean, shit, I don't even know how to go there. I, yeah. I mean, if if you're a human being, <laughs> you know, it's exactly. Like, you got to say something, man. You got to do something. So, exactly. I mean, but again, money, money is, you know, God. So they didn't probably didn't want to lose that coach. Money runs the world, man. Money runs yeah. the world. It's Which, crazy. before I forget, you know, that whole Me Too movement, right? Harvey Weinstein, like we've talked about it a couple of times. Well, yeah. one of the women that was like one of the biggest um, I know this. Keep going. You know, yeah. So Asia, she was dating Anthony Bourdain. Uh -huh. And so it just came out recently that in 2013, she was actually the sexual aggressor to a 17 year old. So at the time he said, well, no, not at the time. Now he's saying that she, you know, plied him with alcohol, got him drunk, took advantage of him. There's there are multiple selfies, but Anthony Bourdain paid three hundred eighty thousand dollars for his silence and for one of the photos. But there were other photos. So they're starting to get released now and they're in bed together. Like you can clearly tell she's not wearing clothes. It's just like I I don't know if the photos are like whole thing, but obviously what they're showing on the Internet is not. Yeah. Um, but well, first he's taking the pictures. I saw the picture. Yeah. First there rule of blackmail. Notes. First yeah. rule of blackmail, you never pay for blackmail. You're like, go fuck yourself and deal with this shit storm that comes with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause it's and, gonna uh, come out anyway. Yeah, exactly. Or they're gonna try to get you for more. Um and two, there's so many double standards in this story. And you know, I mean it's still abuse, quote unquote. But 17 years old, all right. At 17, I was already I knew what I was doing. Okay. I knew what I was doing. You know, when you're a 17 year old boy, man, those hormones are like, like just pumping, you know, and so, you, yeah. you do what you're going to do. And if you find an older woman attractive, you're going to do things. And and that's why he had written a note saying that he was like in love with her since he was 12. Yeah. Um, you know, super obsessed with her. And she said that's why he ended up like she's like, OK, no more. Mm -hmm. And that's why he spoke out about it because he was trying to get back at her, I guess, for turning him down. But yeah, I'm kind of conflicted about that 17 year old thing because she is the adult. 18 is the age of consent. 18 only makes you an adult legally. Like right. you are hardly an adult mentally until yeah. like a mid twenties. Uh, but so yeah, that's try, like try like 32, try like 33, 33. Exactly. I'm, I'm not even there yet. And I'm 32. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting there. I'm telling you, 17, he wasn't abused. He knew exactly what he was doing. He was enjoying yeah. every second of it. There's So let's cut the bullshit. And there is a double standard for a reason. You know what I mean? Yeah, because if it was a girl, that's totally creepy to me. And yeah. like coming from, okay, 17-year-old boy and this older woman, the creepy, like she's a creep as far as I'm concerned. Like 17-year-old boys are going to do what they want to do. Right. But she's still, to me, like super icky and creepy and disgusting. Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't know, man. Like, okay, for example, and this is, let's, I, I couldn't date like a 21 year old. Yeah. I could never, I could never like, I mean. It's weird. One, we have absolutely nothing in common. Absolutely nothing. Two, I, you know, when I go back to Florida State for like games and stuff like that, and I'm walking around, you know, I'm walking around the stadium and all that stuff or the college campus and all that. You know, I'm looking, I'm seeing girls are like in their 20s, you know, 22, 23, 21, 19. And they look like kids to me, man. I mean, like they literally look like kids to me. Like, really? In my I think eyes, they all they look, look older than me. In my eyes, in my eyes, they look like they're 12. Like, so there's yeah. like, I am not attracted whatsoever to them. I look at them as kids. You know what I mean? It's so, gross. I mean, yeah, it's gross. Like, I don't even think about it that way. So, I mean, you know, pedophilia is a real thing because I, I don't understand how 
how someone, an adult, can see a kid and be attracted to it. Always, obviously, it's like a mental issue. You know what I mean? Okay. Speaking of that, in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. this whole Catholic Church thing. Oh, is, imagine that! My church, huh? Yeah. Like, I mean, everybody already knew. Dude. Like, sorry, religion up, is just fucked up altogether. I was lucky because I grew up in the Catholic Church, right? And I went to Catholic school in South America, of all fucking places. And all the all the priests down there and the nuns, they were cool though. Like there was never, at least with me, there was never ever ever foul play or intent of foul play ever. Yeah. Uh, and I know that for a fact. No, because I was young and naive. Like I fucking know. Like there was right. never, not even a, a signal of it. And at one point, I was like the altar boy and all that shit. So you know, yeah. I had to do and things. That's like, you think? Let me clarify. Like do things like you know they made me do things like I help around the stupid church or whatever um not other things but there was there was no absolutely no sign of it when i was uh when i was a kid so but that shit it's rampant man especially in the rest of the world so i mean oh we got more people jumping in man oh dang Sean, what up, the what comments up? are live today man, they're lit son they lit. Anyway, uh no i didn't see any of it when i grew up at least but that shit i mean they're known for it in the rest yeah. of the world i mean and we the vatican has hidden i mean like i don't know no. i mean it is shocking because of what happened yeah and to how many people and that's just how many people they know about or right. at least that we know about because i'm sure they the church and the diocese di 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 diocese know a whole lot more victims that they're covering up I can tell you right now that in most of Europe and South America, that shit doesn't make it anywhere because the, the law is useless. <laughs> so exactly. if and it's you will probably die. Yeah. If it's happening, 90% of people don't even find out about it, you know, unless they open their mouth and their dad takes the law in their own hands, which I'm sure they do. Yeah. Uh, at least where I fucking grew up in Venezuela, you go up there and fucking put a bullet to their head and yeah, walk away and nothing happens. And Latin families and I mean a lot of everybody I guess they'll just but that's like within the Catholic Church. I just religion in general, man. Ugh, don't even get me started. Like if you believe in yourself, that's cool. But growing up Catholic, it's just like I'll never forget it. I was in seventh grade. We we're talking about the uh, Noah's Ark or whatever it's called. And then of course me being the smartest I was, I was like, all right, well, what are the lions are gonna eat the whole time? Yeah. And then I got in trouble. I got yelled at. I got pulled by my sideburn out of the fucking classroom for doubting, for doubting the story. They yes. abuse you in there too. Yeah. Like they physically. Oh, dude, they used to beat the crap out of me. They were allowed to beat the crap out of us. And uh, yeah. So they took, I was like, fuck this. I don't believe in this anymore. That was the end of that. And then I kept getting in trouble for it because I kept questioning everything. And then I moved to the States and I thought it was going to be like safe by the bell. And that was a rude awakening, but that's a whole different story for another day. <laughs> yeah, just trying to stir up some drama in here. Why? What is he talking about? They're about to talk about Trump. I don't have anything. I to can. Talk about Trump. I mean, go ahead, Shannon. Talk about Trump. Let's okay, say, what's so this Trump is world? kind of a down. Since we've been talking about shitty things this entire podcast, yeah, I might as well take the dirty downers down. <laughs> so, you know, this is actually very sad. Molly oh wait, wait, this. wait, wait. Is Jeffrey for Trump or against Trump or what? Oh no, he's against. Okay, like, I was he thinks say. he's. Well, right. I wouldn't say against because Jeff's just not political. He just um, you had sideburns in seventh grade. Oh, dude, I had a full fucking beard, man. He had I was long shaving my hair. Mustache. Oh yeah, I was peeling my. I was already shaving at that point. I shaved this morning. Shadow knows I can grow a fucking beard in like a couple days. Yeah. Anyway, so anyway, so sad story. Mm -hmm. Um, out of Brooklyn, Iowa. You know Molly Tibbetts. I don't know. I know you don't watch that much news, but. She was abducted 34 days ago. You know, they had this huge search for her. They finally found oh, her. Oh, that's the girl with the undocumented guy that killed her or whatever? Yes. So uh, Trump released a tweet. That's sad. That's so and then sad. He, yeah, it is very sad. It's, I mean, so Trump went and ran his big mouth and he mm -hmm. made a comment about undocumented citizens. He completely politicized and trivialized what happened to her and her family. Which, I mean, that's just like him, but it's super tacky, it's gauche, and it's just disgusting what he's done. Um, her family's already released a statement that, you know, and I have a statement in my notes here, but they just basically, to summarize, said evil comes in all colors, and we don't want her death politicized, and this is absolutely not what she would have wanted. And yeah. then, you know, um, 
apparently he may not be undocumented, which a lot of people are mad at Trump for running his mouth about having all the facts because and I'm still not, I haven't decided he ran whether his he, mouth without all his, are you, are you kidding me? He actually I did that? That was stupid no. on my part. No, he, he did not do that. He ran his mouth without all his facts. No. Can you believe it? No, I don't believe it. It's unheard of. It I know. It's very uncharacteristic of him. But um, so he may be documented. He His lawyer says he's here legally. So whether he's documented or has a visa or work visa, whatever. So and then this is the part that I'm not sure if this is relevant or not. But mm. I think it's worth mentioning that he had been working for a prominent Iowa Republican politician for like four years. And the politician is saying that, you know, well, we did the e-verify through the federal government's website and, you know, he checked out. Yeah. So, you know, he might be, you know, legal, but. Oh, um, don't even, if, don't even get me not. started. Don't even get me started. You know, I'm in the middle of getting my citizenship. So it's like when they're asking for all those reports and I get them back, my FBI report doesn't even have three quarters of the shit that should be in there. Yeah. <laughs> I so, laughed so hard when I got it back. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, and not that it makes a difference whether whoever like did this terrible act to her was yeah. legal or not. That makes no difference. But then going back to your thing here, um, bye, good night. Hi, Jeffrey. See you later, <laughs> man. I know you wake up early. But going back to what you were talking about, uh -huh. I don't know how, you know, that's another debate, the whole E-Verify thing, because you had things on your record that were not even supposed to be there. Your name was spelled wrong in some parts. You know. Apparently I was Mexican. I'm like, really? Yeah. I'm Mexican? That's news to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah this so. is why my lawyer found, this is why my shit get kept getting turned down when I was done doing it on my own. And I finally had to hire a lawyer to go through with it, which so. has costed me a lot of money. And to top it all off, for those of you that don't know, my mother is American. Her father yeah. is American. I come from American bloodline. The only reason I don't have my citizenship is because I turned 18 in the middle of it when my mom was doing it and I went off to college. And I never got around to it, but I have a permanent residency and I always had a passport. So I never really cared. I couldn't vote. But now it's like, okay, I want to do it now. And it turned into a nightmare. And I don't think people realize, you know, they're it's like, nightmare. just do it like everybody do it the right way. It's expensive Dude, and it takes a long time and you're fairly me, well off. Yeah. It's Can cost you? me a lot of money. It's taken years to get it done. And again, I've been here for what? 20 something years. I mean, I built my whole life here. Yeah. I should just be able to walk in there and be like, you know what? Let me swear. I want to be a U.S. citizen now. Where's the <laughs> Yeah. And that should be the end of it. My mom's from here. Her father's from here. You know, whatever. It's like, that should be it. There yeah. should be no questions asked. It's That's the way it works. It's like, oh, he's American blood. There you go. He's been here 26 years. Like, he's not in trouble. He runs his own shit. He pays his taxes. Like, it should be like a done deal. Just sign a paper and swear that you're going to be fucking, you know. America. Exactly. That's it. Like you background know? check. People don't realize how hard it is, and you know, yeah, you're fairly well off, and it's mm -hmm. still expensive. So can you imagine yeah. people who are working below minimum wage? You're getting paid below minimum wage. Oh, I'm gonna tell you right now. Just eighty hours a week. Just the application by itself is like four hundred and fifty bucks. That just the application by itself, and that doesn't mean you're gonna get through. That's just the application fee. Exactly. You know? Like mine, my first three got turned down and I couldn't figure out why until my lawyer ordered the FBI report and it came back that somebody in Texas, when I got in trouble there, put that was Mexican. I was like, you fucking oh, yeah. idiot. You know? So. He got multiple things wrong. Yeah, multiple. We laughed about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, are you kidding discussion. me? So have a little bit more patience with people actually trying to become citizens. Well, it's like, you know, when people say, it's like, oh, if you fucking live here, you should learn English. You should know English. Well, how do you know that you just got here yesterday? Like, I didn't yeah. learn I didn't learn English overnight. It took me like, well, I learned fairly quickly because I was in school and all that. But, you know, if you're an adult, it's not easy. Yeah. And we're both here. fairly moderate. I mean, like, I know, like, you guys call me a bleeding heart liberal. I'm just all about people. Yeah. But that's not, that's not an extreme left thing to their left view is just like have some understanding for your fellow human because you go to any other country, you go to Mexico, like these people complaining about Mex Mexicans vacation in Mexico. They go to resorts where they speak English. Yeah. Like I hope Mexico changes everything and I hope they only speak Spanish. And I hope when like Brenda and like 
Becky go on vacation for summer or spring break. Crystal and, and Becky. Nobody speaks English. <laughs> it should be that way. Be, that's the way it should be. Yeah. You know, and you have to press two for English. Just have Becky and Crystal go to fucking Miami. They'll be like, huh? No one speaks yeah. English in Miami. I can tell you <laughs> that right now. Um, there was another thing I was going to tell you. Shit, and I just completely went blank. Oh, the, um, what was it? It's not about, uh, I don't know. I just went blank. Completely okay, went we, blank. We do that. Yeah, it was There's about so Becky and Crystal. Crystal and Becky. Something. Maybe Mexicans, Crystal and Becky. Basic bitches. Basic bitches. Pumpkin Spots. Bless your heart. Oh, God. Pumpkin uh, spots. Uh, Rhinestone Crosses. Miss Me Jeans. <laughs> Miss Coach Bags. Oh, I don't know. I went blank. I was going somewhere with that, and I completely just left me, man. We need to go somewhere. Okay, Speaking let's go. Speaking of. What? Since, like, try to jog your memory, but, like, so I've been dealing with extremely crazy customers lately on the phone. <laughs> I love and, your customer stories. Oh, uh, I got it. It came back. Good. It came back. So hold that thought. All right. So you got to cut people a break. You know, people love to talk a lot of shit. So, for example, people talk to, like, oh, millennials are fucking lazy. Millennials don't do shit. Dude, I'm around a lot of millennials in my line of work, and I know fucking millennials that put most of you bum baby boomer motherfuckers down to shame. I'm talking about working 16, 17 hour days like I do. Yeah. So it's like when I hear that shit, it's like, no, man, you just you're not that little bubble around mm -hmm. you. It's like, trust me, there's plenty of millennials that are making bank and working their asses off because I talk to a lot of them and I do business with a lot of them. You know, it's I'm pretty, millennial. It's pretty and, fucking. Uh, no, well, I'm. I don't even know if they're millennials. I'm talking about like 21 year olds. It's pretty fucking yeah. humbling when you're sitting in a meeting talking about big numbers and you're getting schooled by a 21 year old in your field, which you know it's pretty fucking humbling. But it, you know, they it's got, because that's how they were brought up. Like they were brought up with technology that we didn't have until you know. Yeah. We were older. I couldn't imagine doing this at. 19 years old what i do you know you, it's like, if you were brought up in this era i think you would be a total mark zuckerberg like even um, with your personality like not supremely antisocial, but you would be like in a basement coding like oh, just totally, leave me alone totally, including totally. yourself you know what you know what i look back I, like i think about it a lot now that it, you know this is what i do for a living and i'm like so deep into it because let's face it, it's not that I didn't have the web back then. I mean, I remember getting my internet when I was 13. I was lucky, you know, I grew up in a nice home and all that. So I was one of the first kids to have internet at their home. I had my first computer when I was nine, an Apple II. So I was already fucking around with DOS and all that stuff. Now, what happened when then, you know, when then I just didn't, I didn't grasp okay, I couldn't just do what I do now. Like when I got started, it took me a couple hundred bucks to get started. You know, back then to do what I do now, just to build a landing page, it would have cost me like five grand. You know, yeah. it's like because you had to get a programmer to do it. Uh, also, all the information that I have access to now and all these kids have act that wasn't out there. No, you had to know someone. You had to be in Silicon Valley to know or learn how to do these things. There was exactly. no fucking school teaching you any of this shit. Like you had to learn even, on your own. It was like kind of I mean, we had no idea how big it was going to be. You know, no, everybody knew like, no. technology is the future, but we didn't know that like anybody was going to be able to do it. And you know, when you look back, the people that are huge, like Bezos and fucking Zucks and uh, I don't know, Gary Vee and all that, they had a, a leg way up with a fair advantage. They weren't, you know, they didn't come from even Bill Gates. They didn't come from like poverty. All right. Let's make right. that very clear. Uh, also being at the right place at the right time. Oh, they dropped out of college. Yeah. I dropped out of college too. And I'm doing very well, but. They dropped out of fucking Harvard, you yeah. know, Zuckerberg was in computer science, you know, Harvard for computer science and his roommates were there for computer science. You know, when you're in that beehive, I mean, you know, and he just came up with the idea and they just ran with it. It's a whole different ballgame. It's being at the right time, you know, right place at the right time. Because yeah. when Facebook came out, there was already six social networks. He just, Zucky just fucking took it to the neck his way. He never cared about money, man. That's what made the difference. He just wanted to his thing uh you know to do it his way so which yeah. is yeah and microsoft was a complete gamble anyway yeah yeah that was a complete gamble too but again 
Bill Gates came from money. He both yeah. of his parents were attorneys. So it didn't really matter. Like, no. cause no poor kid is going to drop out of Harvard. No, exactly. Unless they come up with a crazy idea. And then you have yeah. uh, Bezos. He was, okay. He was the hedge, uh, working for a hedge fund in New York or something like that. And then he was in charge of product research or whatever. And then he figured out that people wanted books in the middle of the research they had him do. And he's like, oh, I'll launch a web, excuse me. I'll launch a website and fucking start a bookstore online. Now yeah. that the online stuff is here. Now, but obviously he's a smart super dude. You don't get to that level by being stupid. But you know, it's being a, it's a lot. It's not just coming up with it. It's being at the right place at the right time. Most people don't know that the person who took Facebook to the next level was Sean Parker, who's the guy from Napster. After he yeah. fucking got nailed for Napster, you know, he just lay low, and he's the one who took FB to the next level. So and see, that's another one too. I mean, he was an innovator or a pioneer, I guess, in the music on industry online. Dude, he destroyed the whole music industry single-handedly with one yeah. program. I mean, <laughs> and it was just like, I just want to share my music with my friends. That was it. You yeah. know, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be what it became. I mean And then overnight it was just done. Yeah, exactly. It's and then, and then you know Tom, he was the first well there no. were like other smaller ones, but MySpace. MySpace you know? blew up because it opened up to everybody and anybody could do whatever the fuck they want and they didn't have to use a real name. Yeah, so it blew exactly. up. And Tom's like, oh, 450 mil? Fuck yeah, I'll cash in. He knew it wasn't going to go in. I, Zuckerberg had a vision from the beginning. Of what he, he still has it. From what he, I'm, like, I read the whole like real story behind Facebook and it's, it's insane, dude. Like the way the guy, it's just a whole different level. You know, the guy grew up AP, genius in chess and calculus and all that shit. I mean, this guy, it's, he's a genius. He's super smart. That's why he's super introverted. That's why he has no personality. <laughs> you know, I mean, it is what it is. And that reminds me of something. So I was watching something the other day online. I got in like a YouTube hole and they were debating oh my God, YouTube holes. the birth of trolls. Where did trolls come from? Where did they start? You know, um, and somebody said, you know, they started on MySpace and they're like, well, YouTube has been around longer than MySpace. And then, so like people were naming all these things and that got yeah. me thinking, I wonder, like, so YouTube and MySpace were like my era type things. Other yeah. than that, you know, it was chat rooms. Uh, YouTube was started by an ex engineer from Google and his buddy. They both quit Google to start YouTube. If I remember correctly, something like that. They started it. And then they got offered a billion for YouTube and they're like, okay, <laughs> you know, they yeah, sold out. Here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I couldn't even imagine. And you know what? This is just the beginning. Yeah. If you, I mean, I'm telling you with the shit that I see daily, this is just the next here. I'm going to give you a little secret of what's going to happen. <laughs> it's getting to the point where you just have to be a creative person. You got to be creative. If you can come up with the idea, the AI is going to be behind it to make it happen. Yeah. So if you can come up with the you idea, just tell it what to do. Yeah, you're gonna have the resource of AI to make it happen. You don't have to hire coders. You don't have to hire programmers. AI is gonna make it all for you. You just gotta come up with the idea. So if you have that vision, if you catch something, that's the way to do it, man. I mean, you just gotta keep your eyes open, and look for that that one opportunity that's missing. And then if you catch it, or you catch it by accident, accident, or if you're at the right place at the right time, you never fucking know, man. You can get it. You can get it. You can make it happen. AOL chat rooms in the early 90s. I remember Hell, those. I yeah. forgot about that. We used to that. cause so much trouble. So AOL and MSN. ASL. ASL. We used to, yes. ASL, girl. Uh, <laughs> we used to, and then, so around that same time, Chris and I were totally, like, goody, goody girls. But we would get on with our fake screen names mm. and just, like, cause trouble or, like, start, like, talking sexy. And we were, like, teenagers. And, right. you know, what's up like being sexy and then like they would get into it and then we'd be like fart noises and just like totally ruin it <laughs> we were completely immature and then we used to call remember those like call 1-800 live local oh so yeah we used to call those with our sexy voices and you know create a character and then they'd get on the phone and we would also again just literally make fart noises into the phone Dude, AOL chat rooms were so creepy. Like, I remember being hit on when I was a kid. Like, I was like yeah. 13. I was 14. 
And it's like, <laughs> now that I look back, I was like, it was probably some creepy fucking pedo bear, like hitting on me, not even know it. And we did not know. We had no idea. No, because we're dumb. <laughs> we're stupid, especially back in the day. And it didn't register that, hey, this could be an old, fat, like, bald, creepy guy in well, a you, dark room somewhere. You know what's funny? It's like people thought that AOL was the internet, and AOL was just a program. That's what's crazy about it. I had a call from one of our customers. This was months ago. Uh -huh. And, you know, I get their emails to send them reminders and stuff. And they said, well, you know, and I love the people who are like, it's no capital letters. It's all lowercase, no spaces. I'm like, yeah, I know. That's so sweet that they say that, but they're old and they don't know that it doesn't matter if it's capitalized or not in your email. Right. But anyway, right. this old lady mentions, you know, she might switch your email address because AOL is charging her too much. And I was like, what? Why are you, pay why are you paying for fucking AOL? So she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Charles goes, 50% of children on AOL were FBI agents. I don't know, man. I, I, I got to disagree with that. I'm pretty sure there were probably pedophiles or some shit. <laughs> I mean, I could have been bait because we looked for the we looked for the pedophiles without knowing like we were being weird and probably, um, you know, stalked as well. But yeah, yeah, this lady said she was paying for AOL and I told her, oh, man, you have not had to. AOL has been free forever. Oh, my God. Holy you crap. Are you reading so this? Shannon, my sister piled up a $600 bill on AOL because of chat rooms. Remember they used to charge by the hour? Yes. So they you would did? have to collect those. Yeah. That's when they first came out. You would have to get, oops, you would have to get these CDs. And that would come with like 500 free hours. Right. I had, I had a shitload of them. So it was always. Yeah. Steal them from like Sam Goody. Yeah. I think they were, I think AOL was like 20 bucks a month or something like that. It, they went to monthly. Yeah. But yeah, they're still charging people. I Googled it. You, They will still charge you today if you are like ignorant and you just don't know. And I told her, you can have a free, I've had AOL like since it first came out. I still use my email address and it's embarrassing when I give it to people. MySpace still active. You know yeah, that, Yeah, mine right? too. Oh, I get on MySpace every once in a while just to look at like my old photos and cringe or laugh. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it before, but it's like, I don't... <laughs> This is what I understand, though. Like, I know Justin Timberlake bought it with it's some other music. people. But they're not making money. There's no yeah, active don't... users. Like, I, I mean, don't understand. So it's for, like, up-and-coming artists. So maybe they're the ones. I've never heard anybody go, hey, man, did you check out that band of MySpace? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, I haven't heard that. Have kids heard that? Like, is people are just going to forget about it 10 years from now and then the new kids are going to pick it up and go, like, let's go to MySpace. Jesus, nine ninety five an hour for AOL after that? You got to read the comments. People don't know what you're talking about. No, I'm reading it. It says we were on AOL when they were offered or when they only offered 10 hours free. And then it was nine ninety five after that. Dude, Blockbuster fucked up. Blockbuster had the opportunity to go against Netflix. Before Netflix, they had the offer to go to streaming. And they mm -hmm. turned it down. And then they Imagine ended up that. doing it anyway. They ended up going to like the DVD kiosk. You can do it online or. They were too late though. They were too yeah. late, man. There's one blockbuster left. You it's know what? still open. You know what? That's the typical guy that I have to deal with sometimes in my line of work when I, when, you know, I get brought in to talk to their company and then they bring in the CFO or the CEO or CEO or CEO. And it's like, they're like 80. And then I try to explain him what we do and how we do it and, you know, everything that we can do. And they're like, oh, no, we, I, I don't want any part of social media. <laughs> like, OK, like, you don't want to make money. You don't like money. OK. I mean, it's like I get that it's not for everybody, but you at least have to have a presence. You don't have to be active, but open a page, not, put your we, information. We, we, what I do is not even about presence. It's about running ads and getting money. Like they don't yeah. get it. They don't get how many people are active in these fucking platforms. And it's amazing to me that you try to explain that to them. They still don't get it. And then Netflix sued Charles. What is Charles saying? And then Netflix sued for copying their model. Is that, that? I don't know. Oh, I remember I hearing something about that. They, I, I don't doubt it. This was like, 10 years ago, I think. I don't know. I can't believe how long it's been around. Like, I just don't pay attention to that stuff, I guess. Yeah, like, I remember 
I remember we used to get the DVDs and I never sent them back for Netflix. I was like, yeah. I always forget about it. I was going to stream a video last night. I watched I Feel Pretty with Amy Schumer. And I was like, it's wow. four bucks streaming. It was actually pretty good. It was decent. No. We didn't like we just wanted to watch a movie. Mm -hmm. But I was like, well, I'm at the grocery store. I'm just gonna get, you know, a Netflix DVD. They count on you to not return that DVD because it's still not. here. And I could have streamed it for four bucks and never had to worry about it. But I was like, I'll take it back tomorrow. No, I, didn't. Never, I didn't. I never did. I don't even have I don't even have a DVD player anymore. Xbox. No. We use our yeah. Xbox One. Do you? I don't. Oh, I guess yeah. The PlayStation. I guess that's a DVD player. But that, I mean, I never use it. I stream everything from my phone. No, we stream everything too. I have like Hulu, Netflix. Um, what what is it? The other one? Amazon. You know, we have so many. I have Bravo, Hulu, <laughs> Netflix. Yeah, I mean, so if how it was, do you stream Bravo through Hulu? Through Hulu and the Bravo app. Okay. But I pay for Hulu now, so I just do it through Hulu because it's like no commercials, no nothing, and yeah, because I want to cancel cable because first of all, I just hate like my wife won't let me do it. My wife won't let me do it for some reason. She wants to like DVR everything. I'm like, you don't Jeff understand that you can just press a button and then fucking it streams from your phone. Like if yeah. it was up to me, I wouldn't have cable. I was just I joking swear. about this today. You know, when I was single, dinner used to cost me like eight, you know, <laughs> something quick, like ten bucks. Now dinner is like 30 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, My it husband be, and your wife are so similar. It's weird. It can be just like, okay, I just want to have a fucking sandwich and that's it. No, no. It has to be organic, blessed by the Pope, fucking whatever. Whatever free, gluten-free, all this shit. I'm just like, you know. HBO Go. I just use my parents' HBO Go account. I have <laughs> HBO Go as well. But I use a friend's, but usually everybody is the one that's using my streaming account. I don't think I have oh. HBO. What's on HBO right now? Curb, but that's the only show I can think of that I want to watch. Ballers. I watch Ballers. And then, like, there are a bunch of comedy shows. Sarah Silverman. Oh, I love you, I America. Have, I have a service for all those shows. I can't talk about it here, though. We'll chat afterwards. But yeah, you should like it, it's, but I can't help you there. It's invite only. They closed the invites, like, six months ago. Oh, really? Damn it. It's going to be special, yeah. Because I'm yeah, looking for like a good website to download stuff, but there's I, something like I don't even have to download it. I have access to every TV show and every movie in HD, and I can stream it from my phone. Yeah. Oh well, I, there's one that you can stream with like, and I read about it in some Amazon forum, and it's like Bit Download or something like that. I forget what it's called, but I Bit just haven't figured out how to download it. Yeah, those are like torrents and stuff like that, though. Yeah. This one's like streaming, just like Hulu and stuff like that. But some dude mm -hmm. made it in Iraq or some shit. <laughs> and I got access to it through one of my friends in, in marketing because they're testing it out. So I got access to all that stuff for free. But it's invite only. It's not even open for everybody. It works, though. Yeah. So, so LimeWire used to be the other good one. And then the Pirate Bay. That used to be my favorite. Like everything Pirate I Bay. love gets taken away. Pirate Bay is still around. I know, but they change it all the time. And like I don't trust it anymore because like. You they know, do have live been... boxing, live boxing in HBO. I forgot about that. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. True. Um, yeah, Part Bay is still around. LimeWire was the herpes of music. Like, if you touch LimeWire, you got like 300,000 viruses on your computer. I and, got pretty uh, lucky on LimeWire, but I was like very careful because I, I knew exactly what to look for. This is when I used to be super good at technology. <laughs> and then what I happened? Had a, I had a new phone like every month, and you know, then I was just. Like you know what? Smartphones came out, and after smartphones came out, I stopped paying attention. I guess yeah. because like they were supposed to do everything for you. Yeah, I don't really care about phones anymore. I really don't. I don't either. Like I used to be obsessed with my Androids. Like, oh, I can customize this and customize it, and do this and do that and do that. Then, long story short, I I uh, okay. Before I get into this, because I'm gonna get the haters. I had the iPhone when it first came out, and I actually liked it because it changed the world, right? And then I hopped to Android because I like the way Android, you can customize everything. And I was, a, you know, I'm a geek or whatever. So I loved it. And then the last Android that I bought was the Note 7. And for obvious reasons, it was going to blow up. And yeah. I, was, I was supposed to get on a plane and I couldn't get on the plane because I had the stupid phone on me. And I had to go to the store. And the only decent phone that they had was the iPhone 7 Plus, which I still have. Boo. I got to give it to Apple, man. It has not frozen on me once. Really? But, yes. But it's a pain in the ass.
because I can't just well, this doesn't bother me any, anymore. But when I first got it, I couldn't transfer my movies onto it, just like dropping and dragging. It was like gotta I, open Apple iTunes, gotta do this. About that. Yeah, it sucks. It's bullshit. So that used to drive me nuts. And then trying to transfer music drive, but now I have Spotify and now I stream everything through the apps. So it's like I don't care anymore. All I do on my phone is text and yeah. check my email and that's it, Facebook. Chat sometimes. Yeah, and chat. So it's yeah. like that's why I haven't gone. I mean, for, for me to go back to Android again, it's gonna take something like ridiculous for me to make the jump. For and me? even with and to get another iPhone, like I don't even I don't even want to get the X. Like I don't care. Like this that's I've heard bad things about it. It's all the same stuff. That's why so when I got the Note 8, like the only problem I've never had a problem with freezing. The only problem I'm having lately is, you know, I'll plug it in at night, wake up in the morning, it's been charging all night, but it's at like twenty percent. That's not and, good. Yeah. So I'll you know, sometimes it negatively charges. Never. So I have to do like a soft reset right. and uh when I got I, this, I got it for the camera and also because it's a Samsung and, you know, they're super popular. There are much better camera phones than this, yeah. but I was like, I'm never going to get an expensive phones are just ridiculously priced now. It's stupid, but yeah, they know you, people will buy them. They're yeah, I, got, I actually look, yeah, I actually looked at the cell phone bill the other day, which I never look at it. I just, just gets paid or whatever. And then I'm like, fuck, that's, that's kind of high. I remember it being lower than that. And then I looked yeah. at it. Well, Nicole got a new phone. I was like, holy shit, fucking $1,100 for a phone? Like, when did yeah. that happen? Like, $800 on the low end. And for, yeah. for a good smartphone, like Android or Apple. Yeah, and then, I was like, holy shit, like $1,100? I can build a whole computer for $1,100. Well, they yeah. are a computer. I got. I mean, it's a computer that fits in your hand, takes a beating. Yeah. It's waterproof. So Water you know, resistant. Yeah, yeah, water resistant, actually. So after I told myself, I, you know, I'm not, I don't need a new phone. I'm not going to get a new phone. I don't care because to me, it's an expensive camera. Yeah. My sister got the Note 9 and I'm like, damn it. I want the Note 9 because your pictures, like, do your phones, does the camera lose quality with every update? Because I feel like my pictures aren't no. as good anymore. No, I just got to fuck with the settings. You got to mess with the settings. There's settings yeah. you have to set in there. Like I put mine on 60 frames per second and 4K and all that shit. You got to yeah. mess with it. But uh, I'm, I'm willing to go back to Android if Google will put out like a good phone. Like they have the Pixel 2 or whatever it's called and it's not, yeah. it's plasticky. It feels, it feels like cheap plastic. Like that's another thing I gotta give Apple on the stupid phone. And, like it feels like, you know, like it's, well, duty, like it's well built. Like, you know, uh, which none screen of my- screens shatter so easily and they make things to break now. I think that's the issue. Like, you know, back in the day, like our parents would have TVs yeah. They, like your parents probably still have stuff. And I know my mom does. Like my mom has an alarm clock since before I was born. That still works just fine. Oh, yeah. You know, my parents still have has some shit stuff. they have forever. Yeah. I, yeah. There's no way that anything nowadays would last until we have like kids if that ever happens. But yeah. that's the reason why I did it too. Like I'll just like, what is it? Is he's like, I went to Apple because I don't care about customizing. I just want something that works. It's true. Um, you know, I used to care about all that stuff, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't anymore because I don't have time to fuck around with it. I just check work stuff and personal yeah. stuff. And, and, and I, I used like, to be like I this do. rivalry between yeah. Apple and Sam. Like I used to be, you know, I d would defend Android, but yeah. I watched something the other day and they're like, they don't care about you. They don't, they don't care about you in general. And if <laughs> anything, you're less valuable as an existing customer than yeah. you are as a new customer. Well, it's like, it's weird how people take sides and they become like part of a team. Yeah. Like I'm Verizon. You're, you're oh, you're in TT. Fuck you. You suck. Like uh, I worked for Verizon for years. People <laughs> I don't give a fuck about you. Yeah, you're just they're a not number in the system. <laughs> exactly. Just a number. And people, like people become groupies, man. They're like, oh, oh, Verizon all the way or AT&T all the way. It's like, why? Like, why are you such a groupie to a like a Fortune 50 company or whatever? Like, they don't care about you. They really that, don't. And yeah, as an existing customer, you're paying more than a new customer would. So yeah, or like you're defending a brand that could give two shits about you. Yeah, or the ultimate fucking fight, Chevy or Ford. Like people are hardcore about Chevy or Ford, man. Like yeah. you can go, you want to start a fight at a bar, walk in at one 30 in the morning to a bunch of dudes and fucking just ask which one's better. 
uh, Ford or Chevy. And or just, just say fuck Ford and see what happens. Yeah, or fuck Chevy or one or two. If you're, yeah. Especially if you're in Texas. We're a <laughs> Chevy family here, so. I like Chevy. I just think they'll look better. I don't know. I do too. I think they're built better. You think so? And they just look better. I have. I don't know. My, Maybe that's just been ingrained in my. I've been brainwashed. My last Ford was in 1999. It was a Mustang, a Cobra, and the clutch went out like right away. But Did it? oh yeah. But in their defense, I was like dragging the shit out of it at the drag strip. So yeah, I can imagine. I might have something had to do with it, but I don't know. That was I've never. I had a Chevy. I had a Chevy before, but that was an SUV, so it doesn't really count. I just think, don't Chevys have more power out of the factory? I think they do. I think they? so, but something about Ford just looks like plastic to me, and maybe that's what cars are coming to now because they're not like the real steel. You know, well, that's American cars in general. American cars in general, they're plasticky. Like exactly, bad- I've never owned an American car. Like even when I was a teenager, I just liked foreign vehicles, and I still drive foreign vehicles. I, dude, I, you know me, I've had luxury cars and I love my rice burners too. Like I went from yeah. a six years BMW to a Z again. <laughs> like, you know, it's like, <laughs> I was like, what? I'm like, yeah, I don't give a shit. I like the Z. Yeah, it's fun. you like it. Yeah. So, which by the way, the lease is up on that in November. I think I'm going to get rid of it altogether for a few months. I don't drive. I was wondering about that. I don't drive. I don't drive. I'm paying for a car that sits there all day. The only place that car goes to is the gym. That's it. Or the grocery but, store if you have to. Yeah, or the grocery store if I have to. But, but they I was deliver like, now, so. Yeah, they deliver now. So it's like I live downtown. I hang around downtown. I go to the beach. It's downtown. Like, okay, let's say I got to go to Miami for the day. I'll fucking take an Uber. Like, big deal. Yeah. Still cheaper than my car payment insurance. You know, it's and like. And you don't have to drive. And it's And I don't have to drive. I can traffic. work. I can actually be productive and work in the backseat for my phone. So. I was having that conversation today. Like, when we didn't live here now, You know, when we were more central to Dallas, which we're not even that far. We're like 45 minutes from Dallas, which in Texas, 45 minutes Uh, is Dude, let me break it to you. As someone who used to live there and now it's in Florida and goes back and visits, every time I drive from Grapevine to your fucking house, it feels like a road trip. Exactly. And I don't want to leave here now. Everything that I need is here. I can, if not, I can have it delivered. Yeah. If if I don't feel like doing driving, I can get an Uber. Right. Or, you know, everything's so easy and convenient. And like, I don't ever have to leave my house. There's another app that's called Turo where you can just rent a car for the day and you can, you can rent like Ferraris and shit if you want to. So yeah, it's and like, then we have like all the Lime bikes and everything. Like if we wanted to bike around, you know, rent a bike. That's the other thing I'm surprised it's not here yet. Uh, when I went to California, they had the, the ride bikes and the scooters that you can just pick it up in the middle of the street and drop it in the middle, just leave it outside and you just pay for it while you use it. Yeah, I can't wait. I hope we get the scooters, but people already complain about the bikes here. Ugh. Did they? Yeah, and Why? that just reminded me because Denton is like the friendliest, unfriendly, or the most unfriendly, friendly bike place. So, like, they say that it's a bike friendly city, but there are no bike lanes except in like very few areas. You'll be riding your bike, you know, where there's no sidewalk and a truck. Like, you know, Texas, big ass trucks will be right behind you on your back tire, like blaring their horns, flashing their lights. And it's like, move around, asshole. There's another lane. They want to make a point. Well, that's here, too. People are, I mean, I I get scared when I'm riding my bike around here, too, man. I go against the traffic because I want to see the fucking cars coming at me. Yeah. I hear it on the exactly. news all the time. You're not People supposed getting to hit. do that. Huh? You're not supposed to, but that's what I do, too. You're not supposed to do that. I don't care. I want to see the cars coming at me. I don't trust people driving coming from the back. And me too. Dude, when I'm riding my bike, it's like eight eyes all the way around because people here yeah. drive like shit. I'm and, going uh, to get the rear view mirrors they have for bikes now. Are you? It's cute. I mean, it's crazy. Anyway, dude, we've been going for like an hour and like something. <laughs> We're not having any notes. We did really good. I and know, like, man. Oh, off the I'm excited. The next couple of weeks we have some guests. So next week we have a guy named Jamie. He's a men's rights activist and a father's rights activist. So that's going to be really interesting. That should be interesting. Okay. Yeah. And then we're getting an interview with drumroll, the satanic temple. Yes. I can't I'm wait for that one. I'm still trying to secure a date. They're super busy with all that's going on in the media with them right now, but 
Did they say yes already? Did they say they yes said already? yes. They're just trying to find a person who has the time that's already doing media rounds to do the so, podcast. So did they uh, did they check to see if we were gonna troll them if it were for real? Did like did he tell them it's like no, it's curious, like for real? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because it took them a while to respond, and that's when I was like, I think they're checking our podcast to make sure we're not like you know, extreme right wingers or going to try to make them look like idiots. And then yeah, yeah. they responded. I reached out to the Dallas chapter, but they told me they're not fun. They called us like a cool podcast. And I was like, thank you, Temple of Satan. But they don't have anybody cool enough for a podcast. Hashtag 666. Like, yeah. Hashtag 666. So they sent me to the Austin chapter, which keep Austin weird. Like we should get somebody really cool. Yeah. This should just be a really interesting interview. I have so many questions for them. Like I just because of all this shit that I love. <laughs> like I just, Oh, Jeff is creepy. Uh, that, uh, I just want to ask, I, I have a bunch of questions I want to ask, man. It's just super interesting to me. So that's I'm excited. Cool. So make sure that when we hang up on here, you're going to see a little notification on Facebook that says, uh, Notify me live or whatever when we're live. Mm -hmm. Click that if you want to know when we're live. Or you can go to the page, click the follow button, and you can say, you know, see first by default. Uh, see first, I think it is. And then if you want to listen on the go, man, if you don't have, if you don't want to interact with us or if you want to listen on the go, every podcast platform out there, just search <laughs> meat and potatoes. That's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Look up, look, just look up meat and potatoes. Yeah, That's meat and potatoes. Are. Or uh, a little bit of everything. Somewhere. Go to the anchor page. Go to the anchor page and just search meat, meat and potatoes. And it will show you every platform on there. You can subscribe on there. And uh, should be cool, man. And uh, thank Thanks you guys. Thanks for everybody that tuned in. We had so much um, interaction, interaction today. today. I love today. it. That's yeah. the thing, man. Thursdays at, at 8 Eastern. That's what we shoot for usually. So, I mean, I can't promise you on the dot because we do work and stuff like that, but we love it when people come on at the same time we do. So if you have those notifications on, it'll let you know when we're on and you can participate. You can be part of the show. I mean, as you can see, we talk to everyone. It makes it a lot more fun. That's for yeah. damn sure. So, uh, all right, everybody have a good night and uh, see you guys later, man. Hope you enjoyed Bye. it. Till next time.